بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمد هو أصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق رب شرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وهل الأقدة من لسان يفكه قولي آمين يا رب Today inshallah we're going to understand the idea of the عين the eye and the Prophet said صلى الله عليه وسلم as we will be seeing the text العين الحق the ayn, the evil eye, is true. And we will also be discussing the opposite of the evil eye is also true. But I want to share with you uh, how this evil eye works. Okay? Uh, before I talk about how the evil eye works, let us first consider some of the sayings of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, regarding the evil eye and how it works. And then, inshallah, I will talk about its cure as I'm also talking about the different sayings of the Prophet wasallam. Okay? Now, this is a very, very important topic because majority of the human beings are affected by this. So, unless they're doing something to cure themselves, they will be affected by this. The Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Al-aynul haqqun, al-aynul haqqun, the eye, the evil eye is true. وَلَوْ كَانَ شَيْءٌ سَبَقَ الْقَدْرِ If there was anything that would have, you know, outstripped Qadr, whatever Allah has written for you, if there was anything to be outstripping Qadr, what Allah has written for you, سَبَقَ الْقَدْرِ It would defeat destiny. It would go in front of destiny. Sabakatul Qadr, Sabakatul Ain. If there was anything to be stronger than Qadr, meaning more definite than Qadr, you can say Sabaka means to win a race. Okay? Sabakal Qadr, Sabakal Ain, Sabakatul Ain. And then the Prophet says, Fa'idha is tuhlistum fagusilu. And when you have the influence of the evil eye, then take a bath. So we'll be talking about how you do that. And the, I'm going to show you the English translation. Inshallah, the influence of the evil of an evil eye is a fact. If anything would precede the destiny, it would be the influence of the evil eye. And when you are asked to take a bath as a cure from the influence of the evil eye, okay, then take a bath. And this is a rule in Sharia that if your Muslim brother tells you to take a bath, take a bath, okay. Take, if you're told what type of bath you should take, what type of water you need to use, I'll be discussing all of that, inshallah. This is something every family should be practicing in this time and day and age, at least every one six months, okay? So now, uh, let us uh, turn to uh, another saying of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on this issue. Uh, now, the... Prophet ﷺ has given us a few cures to this uh, issue. The Prophet said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Abi Hurairah radiyallahu an qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-aynu al and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said the eye, evil eye is true. Okay. And uh, then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Naha uh, anij washam, and the Prophet وسلم, forbade from making tattoos. Why? I will explain that if I get a chance, if I remember this, to explain this. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam anin Aisha radiyallahu anha qalat amarani Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet commanded me. Uh, and what? Uh, the Prophet commanded me to who? To Aisha radiallahu an. Aw amara an yustaraqa yustaraqa man min al ain. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he commanded me to do ruqya. Okay, from what? From the evil eye. The Prophet ordered me or somebody else to do ruqya, and it would be from from the evil eye. So one cure we have is by taking when your brother takes tells you to take a shower. Take a shower. One cure is general, a ruqya against the evil eye. So now you have two different methods. Okay? Uh, 
The Prophet said وسلم, the Ainul Haq, the eye, the evil eye is true. Okay? Again, evil eye is true. Uh, the Prophet وسلم, this tradition has different meanings and interpretations which scholars have given. Uh, an Abdullah bin Haris and in uh, an Anas and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam rahasa fi ruqiya minal minal humma wal aina wal namla. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allowed ruqiya from a scorpion sting and from the evil eye. And namla has many different meanings, but uh, I won't go into the different meanings of that. I'm just going to just talk about the evil eye. Uh, and the Prophet said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, la rukbatan illa min ain aw huma." Okay. The Prophet said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, there's no ruqya except for the evil eye and the scorpion." Of course, there's ruqya for magic, for all of these things. So under evil eye, all these things come. And sometimes people have evil eye, and they think that they have magic, or they have evil eye, or they think they have the effect of the jinn, which is uh, I'm going to show you how Ayn works in two different ways in the human being. Uh, okay. And then uh, there is just one more tradition of the Prophet ﷺ. You can read these in English. I seek, seek refuge with Allah for the eye. Seek refuge with Allah for the evil eye is real. The Prophet said. I'm just going to read this in English. Okay. Uh, commanded Aisha radiallahu on how to recite Ruqya, recite what what do you recite? Recite Quran. Okay. Uh Amaraha An Tastarqi Minal Ain. Okay. That you uh there's no Ruqya except for the evil eye or from a sting of the scorpion. Of course there's Ruqya for other things, but specifically for these things, you're allowed. Uh now uh An Anas radiallahu anha uh, An Anas radiallahu anhu said the Messenger of Allah gave permission to use a spell for the evil eye. Uh, scorpion sting and small postulates. Uh, these things, uh, 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 I will talk about this, that uh, th this is a special thing that you can use uh, for the evil eye. Uh, now, um, over here I want to mention the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to seek refuge from the evil eye of the jinn and the evil eye of the humans. And when Mu'abbazatain kul a'udhu bi rabbil falak kul a'udhu bi rabbil nas were revealed, he started, to, he started to recite them and stopped reciting anything else. So when these two surahs were revealed, the Prophet only used these two surahs. It doesn't mean the Prophet didn't take a shower, but he would use these two surahs to cure himself specifically from the ayn. Okay? And uh, this hadith about the Prophet only used these two is actually uh, da'if. Okay? Uh, so now you know how important the evil eye is. Okay? Uh, the Prophet Ibn Abbas reported the Prophet's evil eye, if the evil eye is genuine, meaning real, if anything could get ahead of the decree of the evil eye, it would be so. Okay? If there was anything that would beat fate, it would be the evil eye. And when you're asked to bathe, do so. Okay. Uh, the Prophet Wasallam said, truffles are a kind of manna, meaning manna and salwa. Okay, a, like a sticky thing you get from nature. Uh, it, I'll show you a picture of it. Their juice is a remedy for the evil eye. The ajwa dates come from paradise. And they are a remedy for poison. Now, as you know, ajwa is also a cure for what? For magic. That's another hadith. But I'm not talking about magic today. I'm talking about the evil eye. Okay, uh, Abu Hurairah said that he took three, five, seven truffles, pressed them, put their juice in a bottle, and applied it as an eye lotion to a slave girl of his who was blear-eyed, and she recovered. Okay, so now uh, this is the traditions of the Prophet ﷺ, some, some of them regarding the evil eye. One of the ones I missed out, but I'll just mention it right now, from where I can start this whole discussion, um, is that the Prophet said, وسلم, or actually it's been narrated about, that there was a companion of the Prophet ﷺ. He was taking a shower, 
And in fact, let me just mention, uh, find that tradition. Hold on. The prophet. So, uh, Amr bin Rabia saw Suhail bin Hanif bathing. So, a man in the desert, they're both companions of the Prophet ﷺ. One of them saw another one bathing. And when he looked at his physique and his body, it was like, he was like, so, he said, I swear by Allah, he said, and I have seen no skin to compare with what I have seen today, not even that of a secluded girl. So he found his skin very attractive. He found him attractive and he made this statement out loud. Sahal fell to the ground just by this statement he made, even though he didn't hear him. But this feeling that he, he transmitted, which I'll share with you what that is. So he fell to the ground and people went to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said to the Messenger of God, can you do anything about Sahal bin Hanif? We swear by Allah that he cannot raise his head. So he's taking a shower, everything is fine, and then boom, all of a sudden, they asked if they suspected anyone. When they replied, they suspected Amr bin Rabia. So the man who said these words, they were thinking maybe he must be the one. Allah's Messenger summoned Amr, speaking roughly to him, said, Why does one of you kill his brother? Why did you invoke a blessing? Uh, meaning, why did you say these like, I swear, I wish I would have this, or no, you, who could have something better than this? Okay? Bathe on his behalf. Amr then washed on his behalf his face, his hand, his elbows, his knees, his toes, inside his lower garment, collected the water in a vessel and poured it over him, meaning the, the companion of the Prophet uh, Hanif who had fell, fell unconscious. So he recovered and went away with the people, none the worse. Okay? So, uh, and then in another tradition, it's been said, the evil eyes reveal, perform evolution for him. Meaning, I'm going to explain that, what does that mean for him, okay? Now, uh, now let me tell you the methods of how it was done, the different ways of doing it, how to cure it, uh, in terms of the shower, okay? Now, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, you, the person the ideal is you know the person who gave you the ayn. You know the person who gave you the ayn. First, let me tell you something about this. When I was very young, I was invited by a group of doctors to give a dars of Quran on Sutul al-Falak and Sutul al-Nas. And, you know, I want to say things like about magic and evil eye, and I wanted to discuss these things, but these were very secular doctors who were just coming into their deen, right? So if I went into too much detail, it might seem like spooky stuff, right? Like, like as if it is superstitious stuff. So I was very hesitant to say what I was really feeling and just give like some dars, but not really go in. Like I wanted to give the dars of Quran, but not really get into it too much because these were like, you know, doctors who Allah was guiding. And if I said something that would sound superstitious, it would turn them off maybe even from the deen. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to... But during the dars, you know, there's sometimes in shirahu sadr, you just, sometimes you just say whatever you say that Allah allows you to say. And so, <clears throat> during the dars, I mentioned a few things. One of the doctors, he said to me that, you know, it's interesting he said that one day I was with a man and he said, I swear this happened in front of me. And he started telling me about a, an event in his life. He said he saw a man looking at another man's horse. And he said, watch what I do to his horse, to this person that's in the Dars of Quran. And he just said out loud, oh, what a beautiful horse. He said, at that moment, that horse fell and broke its leg. So I have, you know, first-hand witness to this person witnessing this event. Then, you know, uh, one day, 
uh, one of the shiuch also mentioned an event, which I'll mention, that there was a tree. And ayn can happen to anything. It could it could happen, like for example, I had a case one day, for example, um, that a, a person made a new tub in the bathroom in the house. And he was showing one of his friends, you know, showing one of the relatives. And the next thing he knows, that all that money and time he'd spent making the tub, all of a sudden just cracked. And in the same way, one of the shiuk was saying, there was a tree, a very healthy tree, and somebody made a comment about the fruits on the tree, and just like within like half an hour, 30 minutes, like something happened to the tree, and all the fruits like just became bad. So this is why the Prophet said, وسلم, if there's anything that would overcome, outstrip fate, Destiny, Qadr, it would be Ayn. So it's very, very important for Muslims, especially in this time and age where people are all materialistic. They're very hasad. They're looking at your Facebook. They're looking at your social media. You know, this is very, very important to be aware of and to do and to practice. Okay. So what did the Prophet say? Now, how does it actually, what is happening there? What are the type of energies that are being transferred? I will... Uh, talk about that but let me go over the method uh, of the shower first and then I don't want to make it too long of a discussion but we'll see inshallah ta'ala how it goes okay so one day uh, so what happens is you if you know the person who gave you the ayin you ask that person to what to take a shower you collect that water from that person that gave you the evil eye and you put it over yourself and that should be a cure you can do an entire shower, as most of the narrations mention, or at least the wudu of the water will be gotten, and the other person will also do wudu with that water as a source of cure. Now, obviously in most instances, we don't know which relative or friend of ours was looking at us and got jealous of us, and so how are we going to cure ourselves then? Well, when it comes to the shower, this is what you will do. One thing you can do, and, and I have to mention a few things that are very important regarding this, okay? One thing you can do, because I have to talk about the type of water. So first I'm going to talk about the method we use in today's day and age, okay? Especially if you don't know who gave you the eye. You don't know who gave you the evil eye. So first you do is you find somebody pious in your family. Maybe your father, your mother, anybody pious, right? You ask them to take a shower, and then you collect that water, and you take a shower with that. Now, how would that practically, this is what I tell people. I tell, for example, the dad, okay, I need you to go into the shower and clean yourself. So now you're clean. Now you put the thing in the tub where the water starts, you know, you close the, the stopper, so the water starts to rise like, uh, like in the bath. So now he's clean, the water is gone, and now he puts a stopper on, and now he does a ghusl with the water. And he lets the water rise, what? To the point where somebody can go into, when he comes out, his son will come in and submerge into that water. Submerge into that water. Now, what type of water do we need there? When you have X amount of water, then you actually need to use the proper water because this water that we use, the tap water that has fluoride and chloride, doesn't do the job, not, not very well, okay? Now let me share with you what type of water you need so that we can understand this from the Quran now. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam, something very important, وَذْكُرْ abdana Ayyub and remember our servant Ayyub is nada rabbuhu when he called upon Allah, he made his dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inni masaniya shaytan, shaytan has touched me. This is one of the aspects of the ayn. He was, as you all know, the story of Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam. I don't want, to, because that would make the talk a little bit longer. But he had sheep and he had wealth and he had wives and he had a happy life. And then shaytan touched him. Allah, he, shaitan challenged Allah, this servant of yours, he's, he's right now, he's very good, but, you know, if I just test him, see what, you know, 
So in Namasaniya Shaitan Binusbi Wazab. He's marked me, he's targeting me, and he's punishing me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, Irkas bi rijlik. Stamp your foot to the ground. So Hada Muhtasilun. This is now your water for ghusr. So this is so now he was, you know, he was in terrible situation. Hada muhtasilun baridun wa sharab. So do ghusl with it. It's cold water and it is a drinking water. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says as a gift for doing that, okay, wahabna lahu wa ahlahu mithlahum ma'ahum rahmatam minna. Wahabna and we gave him a gift and we restored his family mithlahum ma'ahum and more than that his family even doubled what he had. Rahmatam minna. This was the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his servant. وَذِكْرَ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ And then, what? Then what? This is a reminder for people who have true understanding, deep understanding of things. So now, what you have to do, okay, uh, what you have to do is you have to take water, it's spring water. The water that comes from the ground, well water. So now when the person has taken the shower and then he stopped the tub and he now fills the water, okay, now you brought, bought spring water, real water, ma'an tahura, pure water, you could say organic water, okay, from the different companies that sell bottled water and stuff like that, but pure water. And if you can actually go to the lake and get it or go to the beach and get real water, uh, water that is f fresh, can be drunk, that is cold. Uh, in the olden days when somebody had sihr or they had ayn, they used to tell the men and the women that early in the morning, like 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, go with your brother, go with your father, like the daughter, would go early in the morning to the nearest uh, lake and take a shower there, to do ghusl there, and to drink the cold water. But which type of water? Actual water, real water okay so now you have this bath water in which you put the real water now in that that person submerges themselves and they take a ghusl a proper ghusl in there i can't go into the details of how to do ghusl right now but this is the point that you have to take the proper ghusl okay now let me talk about the mechanics of this so as you are doing this, before this and after this, you're reading Qur'an, you're reading Surah Al-Ikhlas, Surah Al-Falaq, Surah Al-Nas, you're reading Qur'an, you're doing dua, Allah cure me from this. You have also the dua of Ayyub we just mentioned. So now, how does this process work of Ayn? It has two aspects. You see, the shaitan that is with you, it is more jealous of the things you're jealous. And it is friends with you, your qareen, your friend, your companion. The Qur'an uses the word qareen for this. Your qareen is your friend with that aspect of you that is the worst of your aspect. Meaning each of one of us is, could be like an angel and like Fir'aun. But maybe the dominant is like the angel. And the sub, you know, the, 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 the repressed aspect of your personality is that Fir'aun that each one of us has. The Fir'aun, the Shaytan likes that Fir'aun aspect of you, that anger aspect of you, the envy aspect of you, the impatient aspect of you. Shaytan likes that. Okay? And likes, th when that part of yourself feels like, I wish I had this, why does he have this? Why does he, I want what he has. Right? This was the whole thing about Shaytan. I want what he has. So now, two things happen. The first is the uh, the work of shaitan and the second is a certain energy that comes from the eye. I will talk about this. So now, when you, someone sees something, oh, why does he, oh, look at that, how beautiful that is. Meaning what? I wish I had it. Right? I wish I had that skin like we just saw. That's why the Prophet said, why did you try to kill your brother? So now, when you see that, and that part of you that is, that's jealous, and you may not even realize it, right? This is why we say, "Ma sha Allah la illa billah." If 
So now that thing that you saw and you saw was so beautiful and you wanted it, part of you wanted it. The shaitan in you is friends with him. So now the shaitan with you and that shaitan that is with him, they work together to take that energy that you have when you're looking at it, they take, they capture that energy. Okay, and they do something with it, like a spell with it that reverses something that someone has. So the other thing that happens is that, you see, uh, I'll tell you this, Ayn works better. This is one way I can explain the Ayn works better with people that are, what? Uh, less read, less literate. Why? Because I'm trying to not talk about literate or unliterate. I'm trying to make a point. When your mind is free from anything except for that thought. Oh, why did he have that? Why does he get that car? Your mind is thinking about nothing but that. It is, it is single-mindedly thinking about that. That has an effect. That energy has an effect. And it can become very strong. And people that do magic, they do these exercises. Okay? They will do exercises on how to focus their thought. You know, they'll take, they'll do, they'll take a white piece of paper, for example, put a dot in the middle, wake up in the morning, at like two o'clock in the morning, just look at that dot, and like just focus on that dot, right? It's like a muscle. If you make it stronger, then it'll become stronger. Your thoughts will become stronger. If you're more like educated, civilized, you know, or let's say you're a normal mother, for example, you're thinking about this kid, you're thinking about that kid, you're thinking about that food, and my husband, and this and that, your thoughts really can't be what? focused like a lens like a laser at the moment someone is jealous their their negative thoughts become aligned like laser okay and uh, somebody especially who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or has Allah in his mind right praying five times a day and so on and so forth it's even harder for them because what part of your mind is going to be thinking about Allah somewhere in the back you're thinking about Allah so you can't really think about this one thing and remove everything uh, if you are a true Muslim, it's hard to do, okay? What you can do is the opposite of that, which uh, if I have time, I'll mention that, that sometimes people call it tawajjuh. Like, you, your gaze looks at someone positively. Oh, subhanallah, like that. And that has a positive and blessing effect upon someone. That you were, because the, the mu'min is Ibn al he's looking at, he's only looks, he does things based upon where and when he is and at that time. And so now, he, as Ibn al he's looking at that thing and he's saying, wow, wow, subhanAllah, right? And it's like through Allah, he's remember he's focusing on something through Allah and that brings blessings uh, many times, okay? So this is what uh, I want you to uh, consider. Now, you should give this type of bath to your children, to your family members, all the time. Reading Surah Al-Falaq, Surah Al-Nas, reading the Qur'an, doing the Ruqya, taking this particular bath that's mentioned in the Qur'an. And uh, and then, you know, uh, I wanted to share some ahadith about Ayyub and his shower and so on and so forth, but I'm not going to do that right now. I think for now, this is enough. I have made my point as far as Ayn is concerned and how it works, and how you can cure yourself from it. If someone feels someone has Ayn, if you feel someone has Ayn, you should tell them to take a shower, and tell them about this process, and you can share my video, okay? And uh, have them drink Quranic, uh, you know, the water that's pure with Falak and Nas in it. You can have them take a shower, uh, like, Take the bot by the bottled water, blow Quran into it, and then put it in the tub, that pure water, so that if you have more money, then just you don't even need the water with fluoride and chloride. You can just fill up the tub with pure water and submerge into that. Even better is going to the lake in the morning and doing it that way. And then reading Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas every single day, and if possible, every single prayer. The more you feel that it affects, the more you should read it. And we're coming into times where this has, it needs to be a big protection for us. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure you. Everyone who watches this video should do this as a practice. Should do this as a practice. That even if you take two, three, four, five bottled waters, 
If you can't do anything, take four, five, ten bottled waters, right? Rinse with the with the nest on them. Go into the bathroom. And what? Just start pouring the water starting from your right side to the middle, to the center, and then to the left. And just washing yourself with that water, with the niya of what? With the niya of doing ruqya. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if there is, Bismillahi arqiq, uh, Bismillahi arqiq, min kulli da'in yu'udhiq, Allahu yashfiq. Uh, and you do dua for yourself, Allah, I'm doing ruqya from any evil eye that's on me, that anyone has put upon me, especially if you are somebody that, you know, people look up to or people, you're on the eyes of the people, right? Uh, if you're on the eyes of the, uh, whether it's the CIA or people on the internet or if, if people have their eyes, you're, somebody is jealous of you in your family, then, you know, get 10 bottles of water, read Quran over them and take a shower doing that and you will see you will see there will be an effect oh i forgot to mention very important the prophet also mentioned using these truffles these fungi okay as part of the remedy for the uh, evil eye okay so these are the things the prophet said this is like manna and salwa that was given to bani israel you can also add this into your recipe of the things that uh, you would add to cure the evil eye, inshallah ta'ala, to it. You know, um, so I'll just end here. أقول قولي هذا أستغفرullahi wa lakum wa nisa'al muslimina wal muslimat. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.